Hi, welcome back to my channel, or you might be new. I'm Patty with Patty Puckett Pouring Art. Today I'm going to be talking about how to make a platform for when you want to pour on photo paper. It's, you, you have to have a platform or the paint will just go all over. And it's got to be made a certain way for it to work. Um, let me just go over the, what you're going to need. You're going to need some glue. You're going to need some quart paint sticks. You get these at Home Depot for 99 cents. There's 30 of them. You're going to need a razor blade for cutting, a pen, a scraper or a credit card of some sort, straight edge, this or any other kind of straight edge, a pair of scissors. You're going to need some cardboard. Vinyl if you have it, but if you don't, that's fine. Some kind of a tape that's not going to let the water go through. I'm just using this packing tape. There's all kinds of different tape. Um, just so, I guess you can't use masking tape. You don't want the paint to go, be able to go through it. So that's what you're going to need to make a platform. I'm going to be making a platform like this. And Go ahead and let me show you how to do your measurements. First off, the only photo paper I know that works is the Canon semi-gloss photo paper. So it's 69 pound, um, 10.2 millimeters, milliliters, what is it? Yeah, milliliters. It's eight and a half by 11. You get 50 sheets. I think it's like $20. I haven't, it's been a while since I bought this. Got this on Amazon. It's a semi-gloss and um, it's a SG201. So you want to, you don't want, there's a back side and the front side. You want to use the front side. There's alcohol inks um, that you can use photo paper with and that's the Kirkland. But you don't want to use the front side, you want to use the back side. So don't confuse with the paint pouring or the alcohol inks. So because these are 8.5 by 11, um, you can use an 8 by 10 frame. Um, that's one convenient reason to, to make um, to, for pouring on paper. Um, I'm going to be traveling. I'm probably already there, but I'm making this video before I go. So I'll be pouring on paper in Kona, and it's just convenient for me to pack. I don't have to pack canvases back and forth, easily framed. For an example, let me show you. So this is, I don't know what size frame this is, but if you want to frame something, um, you can just spray paint black some of your old oak colored frames and you're, you're able to frame these much more easy, easier than if you had a canvas. Um, let me show you some of the ones I did last year and if you look back on my channel probably around January, February you'll see a bunch of paintings that I did on photo paper and uh, I'll be doing a lot more maybe put one on this video. So I'll be right back. I'm going to grab those. Okay, here's a few I did last year. Um, these are not varnished, but look at the shine on that. Turned out so pretty. I did a swipe and another Dutch pour using my small blow dryer. Or it's not a blow dryer, it's um, just a blower, but super shiny. All right, so I'm going to show you how you can do that too. Um, I think this paper does come in other sizes. I think one other bigger size that I haven't, I haven't bought that yet, but let's get going on this. So when you have the paper, one of the most important things about making the platform is you want the paper to hang over. So I'm using cardboard here. It's a pretty stiff cardboard. 
I mean, if you have a real stiff plastic or anything else that's that you can cut to size, I mean, plastic would be really nice. I don't have a piece of plastic, so I just this is a stiff cardboard. I just put tape some vinyl on the back. This is will be the back, and a piece of vinyl in the front. Um, I just I knew the tape would go over this, so I didn't really you want to keep as flat as possible. Although this paper is pretty thick, and when you put paper when you put the paint on it, it it really beefs it up. Yeah, it's very. So one of the most important things I use a cutting mat. For a lot of things um, well for cutting and measuring but you want to put down your hard surface whatever it is probably cardboard and the trick to this is when you cut your cardboard or your mat or whatever you're going to be using you want to put the paper down first you don't want your paper your your platform to be bigger than your paper. You want it to the paper to barely hang over the edge. So as you can see, I mean that's not even I don't even think that's a quarter of an inch. But if you get too much, then that edge will curl down or curl up when you're pouring. So you want to keep it as close to the edge as you can all the way around. That's super important. Like I said, if you don't that painting will drag on the edge. So once you figure out the measurement, um, you know, for your cardboard, then you want to, of course, cut it where it's going to be like I just showed you, like that. Okay. So this one's already cut, and I went ahead and put some vinyl. Just water vinyl's waterproof, so I just wanted to do the back. Then you're going to have your sides. Now, since I'm using cardboard, I have to have something on my sides because I don't want the paint to get in here and just have it come apart. If you're using plastic, you don't have to worry about the tape or the vinyl. You have to, you just cut it and that would be it. So I'm going to go ahead and put tape around the edge here. I know most people are going to be using cardboard. So I'm just going to speed this up so you can see it. Um, I'm going to do it where it's halfway. That makes sense. It doesn't have to be really neat. I do do it on the front so when I tuck it under if it's gathered underneath, it's not going to matter that much. So I'm going to go ahead and do this. Okay, so you want to keep the front as smooth as you can. Um, the paper's thick enough where, I know this cardboard has ridges, where it's not going to matter. And make sure you fold it over and make the back where, if it has some thicker areas with the tape, or you can do it a lot neater than I did, you just cut those off. Not a big deal. It's not going to interfere. I mean, you don't want it sticking out the side. But I'll just cut those off. Okay, that should be good. I can cut it a little better than that. Than that. All right, so you have a flat surface. 
the edges are covered now. You don't have to worry about paint getting in there. And it's pretty smooth. Not where, you know, I have a little gap here. That's no worries. The paint usually doesn't get underneath here. Um, here's one I used last year. And the paint, well, I guess it got on there, but it didn't go too far. All right. Um, then you just turn it on the back. And you're going to take your sticks. Take a couple of these sticks. This helps with tilting. Um, I've done the Shelly technique on this, too. You want to have handles. So you can just tape those on. Another one. This helps when you're tilting for, well, any kind of paint, paint pour when you're tilt, when you have to tilt. Keeps your gloves cleaner. So, there you go. I can tape that a little better. A little but um, yeah, this works. So then, you can, I'm not gonna do this because I need to fit this in my suitcase, but you just put some glue all around the edge and you just stick them on like that. Then when you turn them over, they'll, have, they'll be up off the ground and your paint's able to drip off. So if, once you stick them, then they'll always be there and you don't have to worry about putting cups underneath. Or you don't have to stick them. You can just put it on whatever rack you have. Okay. I forgot, almost forgot to show you. So I just use, in order to keep the paper, oops, the paper on the platform when you're pouring, go ahead and put it on there. Now... The best way to put it on there would be to lay the paper down first, use some double back tape, or just go ahead and fold over a piece of tape. Either way, double back works too. It's probably better because it's, it doesn't give you a little lump, so that's what I'm going to do. You don't need a very big piece. And here's a little tricky part. You want to make sure, like I said, that you have that tiny bit of overhang. So you have to sort of eyeball it. If you don't get it right the first time, that's fine. Push down. And there you go. So, I mean, if you see that you need to move it over, that's fine. You can just pull it up. But um, that's how you do that. And if you try to do it this way, it's a lot harder. All right. If you like this video, please subscribe if you haven't already. Push that notification bell. Give me a comment. Tell me what you think. I really appreciate you guys. Thanks so much. Keep on pouring. Bye.